doing my best imitation of the Gadarene demoniac. Today we are finishing Matthew chapter 8, and we will see two demonized men. And the reason I'm flailing around like that is because th these were scary guys. We had just read that the disciples were on the boat on the Sea of Galilee in a storm, and Jesus miraculously calms the storm. So no sooner has the boat touched shore, they are so thankful to be out of the storm. They were thinking they were going to drown. Maybe they're kissing the shoreline. They look up, and here comes these two men. Their hair is probably wild. They're naked. They have uh, chains hanging from their wrists with the shackles still attached. And they are possessed by more demons than you can count. If you would like to read Luke's gospel, chapter 8, Luke gives us even more detail about these demonized men from uh, the area of Gadarene. Uh, I, I've been to that area right on the Sea of Galilee, and th here come the, the, the two demonized men. The, the, wor the word for demon-possessed, if you read in the Bible, it's really, uh, it's, the word's really demonized. And, and it says that they were so violent, people were afraid of them. Luke's gospel tells us they tried to chain these men up and because of the demons that possessed them with superhuman strength, they broke the chains. Uh, Luke tells us they were naked, had not been clothed in a long time, and they were living in the tombs. I guess they felt comfortable living among the tombs. But when the, the, the Gadarene demoniacs saw Jesus, the demons knew who Jesus was. They knew who he was. Uh, in fact, verse 29, the demons cried out. They, they said, what, what have we to do with you, son of God? Have you come to torment us before our time? And, and then they made a, an odd request. There were some swine feeding nearby. Uh, Mark's gospel tells us uh, the, it was a herd of 2,000 pigs. And the demons began to beg Jesus, look, if you're going to cast us out anyway, would you at least cast us into the swine? And so Jesus says to them, be gone. And when he did, they, the, the demons, and there were many, Luke's gospel tells us that the, the, the demons said, our name is Legion, because there were many. There were so many that there were enough to cast into 2,000 pigs. And then the Bible says the, the, the demon-possessed pigs now rushed down a steep bank and plunged into the sea where they died. Uh, they, they, they went over the bank and did their very best swine dive. They, they committed suicide. Uh, uh, this is the first instance in the Bible of deviled ham. Come on now, that's funny. <laughs> okay, I, I will stop with the bad jokes, but the thing to know about the devil is he, he never stops. Today might be Labor Day when you're watching this, but the, ne the devil never takes a day off. The devil always, and his demonic imps always, are working to hurt God's children. He wants to, to harm you and me. Uh, but, but a couple of things to remember. Verse 29, they said, had you come to torment us before our time? The demons knew that their time is coming. The, the demons know what you and I know. They know how the story ends. In the book of Revelation, they know what their end will be. Uh, Luke's gospel actually is more specific. Uh, the demons said, uh, don't cast us into the abyss before our time. Not only is hell a 
uh, a place of fire. It is a bottomless pit. It's described as an abyss. And in the very beginning of Revelation chapter 20, you see the devil being thrown into the abyss. And there are some demons that are, in, that are bound even right now. Uh, many of them are loose on this earth, as you know, but, but many are currently are being held. And those demons requested, don't, uh, don't throw us in the abyss quite yet. And so the pigs were filled with demons, and then the pigs went in the water, and the pigs were filled with water, and they died. But the demons know that their future is bleak. The demons know that they lose. And so when you're feeling like you're under satanic attack, I just want you to remember that not, not only should you know you're on the winning side, but the demons know. And the devil knows. And because Jesus Christ lives in you, that means you have victory and that means you have power. The devil may not be afraid of you, but he is terrified of Jesus. And Jesus lives in you. Finally, uh, the Gospel of Luke chapter 8 tells us the demon-possessed man who is now delivered suddenly had clothing on for the first time in a long time. The Bible says he was in his right mind and he was seated at Jesus' feet. This man wanted to follow Jesus. Jesus said, no, go back home and tell everybody the great things that God has done for you. And so the man who was no longer possessed by demons goes home fully dressed in his right mind, and he proclaims what great things God has done for him. Uh, why don't you do the same thing this week? Every chance you get. If God's been good to you, why don't you tell somebody the great things that God has done in your life? Have a great Labor Day, and we'll see you again uh, tomorrow morning in Matthew chapter 9.